And welcome again to the Late Night Parents. This is Ted Hicks. Um, across from me is my good friend, True Armor. Uh, True, what's going on? What's going on? You tell me, man. So yeah. I want to give a big shout out to Tom. Um, I, I won't say a sponsor of the show, but this, a product I want to promote, Tom and Sherry's Iron in a Bottle. Nice. It's a plant-based wrinkle releaser, fresh linen scent, 16 ounce bottle received today with the nozzle. And once again, so thanks again to Tom and Sherry, iron in a bottle. Yeah, so with that, Sean, uh, uh, True, I'm telling you, we've been through so much since the last time we spoke. Um, everyone in the world has anointed Joseph R. Biden Jr., but before we start anything, we got to talk COVID-19. Um, a lot of things have happened. They're, they're at 32,000, 32,000 deaths and rising. Yeah. It's like these people <clears throat> are like, to me... They're unbelievable, you know. Truthfully, it's it's it's. It seemed like just yesterday we were at twenty six thousand. Um, <laughs> it well, I think the people in charge are sort of trying. Let's 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 say, let's give them the benefit of the of the doubt and say that they don't want to panic people, so they're being soft with the numbers. But other groups out there the, out there believe that they're behind the numbers just yeah. you know behind so either way you look at it someone's behind on the numbers um if you i mean if you follow the trend of how this thing is going it it seems to get bigger and not less and i haven't seen and mind you i'm just some dude who watched the news i haven't seen a, a big enough drop that anything should open and people should go back to normal but I was also on this program saying that this was going to be well beyond the summer, right? Um, right? Because that's not how global pandemics work. They're not over in like two months, three weeks. Um, and they just, they're just not being honest with us. So first it was, it's going to, everything's going to be shut down for three weeks. And then it became the end of uh, April. And now they just extended it here to the end of uh, uh, May. Uh, I think they extended it in New York to the end of, I don't know where. May, where, May 15th. It? We're on pause so, on May 15th right now. Yeah, everybody's just extending it and telling you it's all right. And watch, it's going to extend through the summer. They're just going to slowly keep, oh, another month. Oh, don't worry about another month. And meanwhile, people are home and not everybody has, you know, a big bank account and college education and, or, or who are technically savvy. I mean, you're losing a lot of kids who are hanging on high school in the first place. And you're throwing behind all these college kids who want to be doctors and lawyers who are in their sophomore year. You're throwing them behind the curve. Um, and I, I mean, I think it's weird because they're just, all the, the millennials of the world are sort of in the same situation now. It's not like, but it, it, it comes down to who you get back on track fastest, right? So if everyone stops in this, this rat race, mm -hmm. but then the Germans and the British and the Japanese and the Chinese get their kids up and back on track faster, and it takes us two, three, six months to do the same thing, and which it will, it, we're going to suffer for it down the line. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why more people are not super <laughs> angry with China. So I don't know. I, I something I told my daughter, and she kind of gave me the screw face. I don't want to say the screw face, more like the gas face. But I told <laughs> her, I said, um, she's graduating in June. She's graduating in June, and I said to her, I refuse to spend thirty thousand dollars a year if your teacher is going to be teaching you 
from Zoom while right. you're sitting here. Right. Long Island. I said, mm, that's not gonna that's not gonna happen. Right. I mean you can do this yourself. I mean this is essentially home schooling and homeschooling is free. I mean if you really want to be for real about it. Um, so why would you be accepted to, like, I have a niece who goes to Georgetown and they shut that whole place down. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of like, huh, why would you, look, if, if all those professors and the whole point isn't supposed to be about the ground and the storied land and all who went there, it's supposed to be about education. We had this conversation before. It's mm -hmm. not about education. Mm -hmm. about money but if it was about education then they could easily give these same kids the great education from all these places unique to those places and cut a giant chunk off of off of the money by letting you stay home with your family see your professor through a skype call like it's 2078 or something and mm -hmm. not need schools anymore not these not need these buildings but the whole place is built on fiefdoms so I, I was watching the guy in new york talk about how um they need ventilators and he was the head of the largest owned hospital chain or something and they said he they owned like 60 hospitals across like new york city i'm just kind of like listen to this rich doctor i mean i'm sure he started out his title is doctor but he's a businessman you know what i mean mm -hmm. and he owns all these hospitals and the American healthcare industry is, quite frankly, a horror show, and an, an expensive horror show if it's you. And these are the people who keep it running. So when the disaster comes out, like we see this pandemic, you see all these like people that you would never see unless you were looking for them. I mean, who owns a giant hospital conglomerate? Unless you're looking for that information, you're never going to see this guy on your television set. So, I mean, I think, I just think America has been a graph driven sort of weird place for so long that now that we need the people in charge to know what they're doing, they don't know what they're doing. And now that we've had to slow up, slow our momentum down the, the momentum of state, cause it was, it's been chugging since 1770, you never had to shut it down before, right? No matter what happened, even with wars, you never had to shut down the economy. Tell people to stay home, you know, even with war, you never had to do this. To get it up and running again is going to take, I think, some doing. Because, so, first of all, I've been cooking up a storm. I've, I've always been a fairly decent cook, and I didn't do a lot of cooking because my last couple of women in my life were vegans and vegetarians and all this other stuff. Now I'm just kind of like, ribs! <laughs> you know? <laughs> going nuts over here so you know i'm not going back to just kind of like getting fried rice i have everything in here to make fried rice I have soy sauce and oyster sauce and all this other stuff i got yeah you know, so i'm like if they can if i can walk into a shop and they can make it for me in 10 minutes why can't i make this for me in 10 minutes i mean i have a walk what don't i have that i need when i bought like 20 bucks worth of stuff you know right now i'm uh I'm not saying it, it tastes as, as, but the whole point of like cooking is you don't cook what they make, you cook what they've made that you like and then you make it your own, right? And then you teach it to your kids and then your kids go, my mom's spaghetti is better than you, or my mom's lasagna is better than you, or my mom, you know, collard greens or fried chicken or whatever you may have, you know, is better than yours. Um, so yeah, it's, I think a lot of people will, will pick up old habits that they love. Like I started drawing again. Um, some people may pick up stuff that they always want to do now that they're home. Right. Uh, so I don't know. So it's, I think some people will be happy to get back to, you know, a thousand McDonald's cheeseburgers and all this. <laughs> but I think this is, this is an opportunity to be like, Look, you know that the people in charge aren't doing right for you. You know that the these giant corporations aren't exactly telling you the truth. Why would you go back? I was telling a friend of mine, I was like, why would you restart this economy? This economy doesn't work for everybody. So now that well, you shut I, it down, I mean, why don't you, you insist that it work? You can't shut it down 
t- I mean, you can't leave it shut down. I, I, right, right, right. I but, right. but why, why don't you restart it as it is? If you're going to restart it, change it now. It's questionable right? to restart it as it is. But I wanted to... to, to I mean, see much of taking pictures of back. money. I wanted to dovetail back to COVID um, mm-hmm. and just discuss being out here in Long Island. I'll tell you this much. Uh, from working in downtown Manhattan, which was the hot spot, to mm-hmm. living out on Long, Long Island. And I tell you, you take Nassau and you take Suffolk together, that's 40,000 infections. Yeah. That's double um, any other city. Yeah, I'm breathing on any, people any is other bad. State, any other state, that's double any other state outside of New Jersey. Right. Because New Jersey is about at 75, 80. So yeah. I'm sitting here saying, okay, so you got about, in Long Island alone, maybe 6 million people, 6 or 7 million people. You've got 40,000 people that are infected. I don't know how out of that number, the, the key number that it seems like every time they have the Corona task force, they never tell you how many people were actually tested. Like they give you that, that raw number, 2.8 million. Okay, but there's 330 million people in the United States. Right, because if they give you that number and told you how many people they weren't testing, then all the stuff that they're telling you would be moot. You know what I'm saying? So if I said, oh, you know, uh, 15 people caught it and uh, five people died, and that's all right, and you go home now, 15 people and five people died, well, that's a lot of people. Uh, but if you say, hey, how, of our population, of, let's say a 1,000 people, how many did you test so we know how, much, how many, and they right. tell you, you know, nobody. I mean, that's a problem. But if they go, oh, well, we tested everybody. Right. And 15 people is all we got. They'd be happy to, to trumpet that news. But if they said, you know, if they could, I know enough about math to know that if you did percentage of the amount of people per capita and the amount of people you tested and the amount of people that are outstanding, you, you could, like, just like they, they tell you in, in, uh, in politics, in elections, oh, so many uh, votes are in already, uh, and only mm-hmm. 1% is in, but they come in layered this way. So we can tell you right now, uh, three to one, it's going to be, they call for Barack Obama early. They call him at 10 p.m., right? So they were like, wow, this is coming in. 2008 like, or 2012? Yeah, two, no, 2008, when he, when he first ran. They called it early. It wasn't even. It wasn't even close. It was a blow. They called it early. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Um, but they were like, "Oh wow, five percent of the precincts are in, and of those five percent, like eighty percent of that five percent is for him. It's going to be super unlikely for them." And they were like, "Oh, wait, wait till California comes in." They were like, "No, super unlikely." So if you can do that with politics, I don't see what, one why you can't do with voting, which is a different story, right? The cast on elections, but I don't also see why you can't do it with this COVID stuff of, oh, the, the percent of people that we tested in the general population comes back, uh, you know, clean, comes back sick, and of those people, uh, people die. They could tell you that, and they don't. And the question is, why don't they? Because I think they're always used to coddling Americans and give you sort of nonsensical information because they're always trying to, to like cows herd you into a place you know they they're on just like those cowboy movies where those guys and the horses are all on the outside of this thing mm-hmm. and on, on this herd and and they tweak you they want to move you left and move you right they want to ease you into a war in afghanistan you start telling you about rape rooms and all this other stuff they want to ease you into it but meanwhile maybe they want oil like we've been saying forever so it's always it's always some goofiness and then when you think that your system is better than their system, you get like F scene stuff and Y scene stuff. And you just say, hang on. So, uh, so, so tell me why these <laughs> daily briefings, um, for me, they're harder to watch. I, well, the daily briefing, though. I might have watched it. I might have watched it two or three times this week. Yeah, you're and not they're alone. More like, they're more like they're political people. events. They're political events now. Look. You don't need to tell someone every day that the world is falling apart, right? That that daily briefing could easily be a, a thrice weekly briefing. 
Monday, Wednesday, Friday. These are the numbers that are up. These are the numbers that are down. This is what we're doing. If something breaks, then you do it every day. But now everybody's doing it. Every governor's on TV every day telling you the same stupid information that more people are sick and stay home. Every day the same. They're not breaking new ground. But they so know people, when I'm on TV, so, so more people, people will think listening? I'm doing my job. So why aren't people listening? Because people have a thousand screens in front of them. And most people are not politically savvy. Most people don't care. Most people don't read books anymore, right? So everybody gets their, their uh, information generally from, I think it's 80% from terrestrial radio because they drive from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. But now that they're not doing that, where are they getting their information from? Most people, people don't have boom boxes in the house. Please, they please have that. Twitter or Facebook. I think that's where we're going. It's Twitter, it's Facebook, it's YouTube. And, you know, it's... Uh, those uh those not apps um yeah those uh satellite radio which plays straight music and no news and no one looks at looks out for news so you know th- these are the this is where they get it and in their car when they drive from point a to point b i think it's the only time anybody generally listens to terrestrial radio but everybody has to drive to work right we all have well up until this happened we all were on the roads going from point a to point b to get grocery, point A to point B, to uh, to work, and and then use some of us to church and some of us just back home. We have our routines are pretty much solid. Very few so, of us do. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I I, I was going to say something. Don't hold it against me. <laughs> it is. I mean, I understand there, there's a pandemic outside. But I'm gonna tell you, it's nice that the roads aren't as crowded. Yes, it's nice that the, it's smog and it's filthy. That the the ocean life is began to come back. You know, like not the ocean life, the uh, wildlife forests are beginning to wander through places again. Um, yeah, I think. But I look. I think America is run by the weakest people, right? People who never did anything other than go to school, right? And then go to college and then go to an office and make all this money. Meanwhile, you know, who did they sit in the bar with and talk to where they go? I know this kind of person, that kind of person. Oh, I can empathize with Bob over there who's sort of an asshole. But, you know, in his sad moment, he tells you why he's an asshole. No one ever liked him when he was a kid and now he's, you know, so you kind of get this feel empty people. I like Joan over there. When Joan gets drunk, he tells you about her failed marriage and blah, blah, blah. You, you learned about people. I think people like Morton, who goes and takes pictures with money and gold bricks, these people are just in a race to a trillion dollars, right? Just like in the turn of the last century, uh, Rockefeller was the first billionaire, and then uh, DuPont and all these guys went to, you know, it, what did he say today? $1,200 will, will be a financial bridge for people for like 10, 10 weeks. weeks. 10 weeks. He's high. That means he should no, not even be in government. No, he's no, this stupid. He's that high. kind of stupid wording will get you hung from a, you know what I'm saying? Will get, like, people going to the, the pitchfork and tar store and showing up at your door to, to cover you in, it's, well, it I, doesn't, I, look, I, you, I, I, people I are not going to be happily I, hungry I, while I, millionaires I, tell them that it's going to, you know, it does I wouldn't wouldn't take it that far. I wouldn't take it that far. I would would totally take it that far. This is the the, the unemployment rate like 50 million people, and no one is talking about it. I'm saying he's a a totally disconnected multi billionaire who's in a public, who's, who's, you know, doing this public. And the people in charge shouldn't have sent them out. Because stuff like that starts in, in environments like this starts revolution it really does i mean let's recall the the uh mid-east thing that whole that all kicked off because some female cop in a place where men's dignity about women is whether you agree with it or not is sort of uh paramount and sacrosanct and this female cop essentially embarrassed him in front of all these people for his right and fruit that he couldn't sell in the first place and he went home and he wrote this letter about not being to make a living and feed his family and on top of that i'm disrespected by this the, this unfair system and these cops. And on top of that, the cop who disrespected me was this little lady, and I couldn't even say, and she was wrong on top of it. I can't take it. And he goes, and he tortures himself. And that letter, that incident, started 
revolutions in eight countries that one guy and his rotten vegetables and one cop telling him essentially you're a, you know you're a woman a, a worthless man so but now we come back to the you, american how, system hold on i don't know let me wrap it up no 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 right, you, can't uh, okay, you can't align that story to steve mnuchin no, 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 I can't. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, no, yeah, I can't. And this is how I do it. Okay. It's, it's the idea that, you know, people are, are struggling and struggling quietly, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you pull the rug out from everybody. And then you tell them stupid stuff like, learn to code, right? And then it gets worse. And then you tell them stuff like, well, you don't need, you know, diapers and pampers and toilet paper and all the necessities. And here's $1,200. Uh, when you do need it, and that twelve hundred dollars is going to get you through this whole thing. All it does is make people angry. It really does. It's the idea. No, no look, everybody likes an extra twelve hundred dollars, but yeah. the idea that an extra twelve hundred dollars is going to to solve and people are being laid off, and and that kind of flipping in a in a, in a environment yeah. where people, and I told you this on your last show, people are going to start protesting and not staying at home because no one's going to sit quietly at home like some doofus while billionaires and millionaires tell them to. They have to put food on the table. Someone has to come up with a solution for them. And just like that, in the last three days, people have started protesting. Um, the governor of Michigan, I'd say, said it was a, a, a political ploy. Well, are you kidding me? People have to feed these children, have to keep these lights on, and $1,200 won't do it. And not everybody has a, a, a bank account, sadly. So those people have to wait for checks. And some people aren't even getting that because they've got, you know, other issues like uh, car outstanding car uh, ticket or, or child support. But at the end of the day, hunger is hunger. And people at the top telling you you should have better planned while they're sitting on $400 million and a 30-year-old trophy wife will get you run up on, you know, because it, it, the French Revolution took about a week. And it's still started in the bar with people going, I heard she's talking talk about Leslie cake. We don't even have bread here. And all of a sudden they march on that place. So yeah, I like I used to tell people when I was a cop, you have to have respect for these people. And, and they did. And they were all a lot of problems with like some of this stuff is ex military guys being cops. Look at the neighborhoods they go into as as conflict zones. And and I'm like, you know what? No matter how you count it, there's more of them than us always. And, and 30 of us will show up in uniform and go, get out of here, and they will. But eventually, they won't. And then you need the National Guard. And that's worked up until, you know, but the National Guard shot all those people at Kent State. Eventually, they won't listen to the National Guard either. And then what will you have? Places fall apart over stuff like this. I have a massive they, they really do. So, so that's my, uh, that's how I equate, like, the whole, uh, Middle East, I, you know, this small kind of thing happening that sort of caught pop because everybody is in the same boat. Everybody's going, yeah, I feel that guy over there who's hungry, who can't feed us. And they, they, they threw him out of his house because he couldn't pay rent. That's outrageous. And then everybody, because everybody's in the same boat. If they're going to do that to him, they're going to do it to me. When normally people wouldn't have cared. But now, you know, people who thought they had, you know, extra ends who were trying to get to the next rung are uh, essentially kicked down the whole flight so and whose fault is it the people in charge who are now telling you twelve hundred dollars is all you need for, for two months and two weeks it's outweighed it's outrageous well, so, yeah I we'll we'll see i'm, I'm i think that the military is going to have to take over extremely extremely disconnected i mean yeah it, it, it seems but like they all every are time, every time he opens his mouth if you look at his stretch over his three years is Secretary yeah. of the Treasury or whatever his position is. Totally. When you're totally out of touch, that's like you having a conversation or trying to align your goals with a, a 20 or 21 year old. Yeah. It's it's you're you're living in a different world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But you're supposed to represent people. And hey, you don't. This you is represent that. yourself and your friends. And that's what it is. This is Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents. Ways to follow the show is latenightparents.com. Um, we're talking with True Armor. Hey, you got a blog post that was up, posted this past week. Um, 
four signs you're being catfished during the coronavirus. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't hold it against anyone who's looking for, potentially looking for love during coronavirus, this pandemic. Um, there's someone for everyone. Yeah. But there's a new study that shows online dating is surging during the coronavirus. Um, and New York residents are the number four most at risk for online rom romance scams. Um, online daters seeking love were scammed out of $362 million in 2018. And that was a 70% increase from the previous year. 70%? Yikes. Jesus Christ. <sighs> all right, I'm old school. This is what I, I have friends who use apps to date people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, fine. And it, to me, it's like a, a conveyor belt of people. And I'm just kind of like not there. So, you know, I like to walk into a place, get a sense of a person and see where you're at and then talk to them versus reading your resume and then call you down for a casting call to see if I want to sleep with you. I think it's ugly ridiculous and devoid of, of connection to people. Having said that, in a land of divorce and no connection to people, mm -hmm. having said that, if it works for you, I guess fine, it works for you. But I think we're, I think we're losing something in, the, in the, the switch over to technology and money and the, all this online stuff. dating is not something. new. Online dating is not new. Have you have you ever? I know, but the, I think we become less and less. I don't know. Okay. Maybe have you ever know. participated in it? No, I would not. No. <laughs> Says one thing. I'm openly clear. judgmental. I'm openly judgmental about it. One thing is clear: romance and catfish scams are bound to go up even higher in 2020 especially really? in places where the coronavirus is more prominent. Why, though? Uh, like, I'm click, a native if, New Yorker, if, if, even if though I don't live there anymore. Link, if you click on the link from the show notes that are in right. me, right. Um, it says, re reason number one, they want to move fast in the relationship. This is their way of gaining their trust so that they can ask you anything and, you, uh, that, and have you want to do it to help them. If it happens to you, don't fall for it. Move your relationship at a normal pace. You're comfortable. What is a normal pace? I have no idea. Exactly. A normal pace. What is a normal pace? <laughs> it, it, this comes from... Um, hey, I fell hard for some girls and dated them for three years. You know? And then so, I also had sore burns with that, other women. So, so wait, was that a normal pace? For that, that relationship, it was. Okay. We went in bed that night. We lasted three years. For other women, there was slower burns, right? We were friends, and then we kind of, like, fooled around and had the right sense of humor. And then before you know it, you know, a year later, you're kind of closer than you thought you were. Um, it's number, reason number two, they don't want to video chat with you. This is usually because they are not who they say they are just and just trying to hide that fact from you. If they don't want to video chat with you during this time, then it's a huge red flag and you should move on with the next match. Also, they say they can't meet with you on video chat with you because they have the virus. It's also time to move on because they have the more, virus. Than, more than likely they aren't telling the truth. They have the virus. Oh, all right. Uh, wow, that's a lot. Um, yeah, see, what happened to just kind of like talking to people, meeting them where you meet them? Here's, here's the thing I'm going to tell all your listeners. Uh, about, I'm going to say about five years ago, I had a conversation with, with a friend of mine. And he was, he was talking about, this was in the midst of, uh, I don't want to say Me Too. It wasn't, it wasn't Me Too yet. but Almost, but almost Me Too? There was a lot of mansplaining and, and man what do they call it, spreading in the environment before there was Me Too. So there was all this, this angsty women issue telling men to you watch, your, watch your zone, right, before the Me Too actually kicked off. Okay. So, um, <laughs> just like that, I forgot what I was talking about. So, um, ah, my mind is just, 
a swirling storm. All right, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, reason number three: they guilt trip yeah. you into giving them money. They this yeah, never give anybody money online they will unless you know them up, personally. They will usually come up with excuses like "I need money to cure me of the virus," or "My loved one has the virus and I need help." If they ask for money, all right, first of all, give it to them. if you're falling for these these kind of it's shame on you. I need money to cure the virus. You know, I mean, don't give money to strangers online unless you want to give money to strangers online. I won't tell you. But that generally, don't give money to strangers online because once you give them a dollar, they'll come back for another and another and another. Um, love your, your first... Look, I'm, I'm old school. I used to give five flowers and take them out to restaurants because that's what you did in New York back in the freaking 80s and 90s and 2000s. <laughs> um, but now, you don't need to do any of that. So, yeah, if you kind of feel a connection with somebody, feel the connection, and then you see them the next time and you ask more questions, and before you know it, you kind of want to hang out. But all this, let me see your resume. What do you do? How much do you make? Is why no one stays married. You know, if I start a business, I can marry you a waitress, right? But if you, a lady, start a business, you can't marry that guy who's a waiter because there's this weird disparity of, of, of even now, of, of gender roles. A lot of women aren't asking guys to marry them, even though they want to marry who they've been dating for a while. And by the way, ladies, don't date a guy forever. I mean, that's, you know, it's on you if you date a guy for 10 years and talk about your best years are behind you, he never married you. That's on you. But don't date a guy forever. Move on. It's hard to move on. Nobody believes in marriage. So if you don't believe in marriage, why you you know why are you angry that you, you, if you don't believe in marriage, all you're doing is dating forever, right? And if you find somebody that oh wow, I don't want to date anybody. I like this person. Why not marry that person? Because marriage is just a shut up. You know, it, it, all all the things are, are always loose. What do they, what do the kids call them now? Hacks for relationships in life and actually working toward a serious relationship with people all these weird hacks so yeah go go to all the dating sites swipe left of many times when that don't work run over to the sex sites and just craigslist or, or whatever but then don't cry about not being able to make an actual connection to somebody this is where we are right people okay. don't make connections anymore if they did marriages would last longer I mean, I think we're the last generation of those people, right? And well, the, I wanna, well I'm, I'm 50. Coming up now. So I'd say people 40 and younger, 45 and younger, generally grew up around divorce and are, are comfortable with it and, and will happily, and they see it on TV all the time. But people about our age, 45, 50 now, aren't really uh, not, not judgmental about it. But, but I don't want to say it's not even an option, but it's just one of those things that it's a generational thing. Some people view it very kind of like, man, that's always an option. But other people, like my parents, are like, well, are you crazy? No, so I, what, I what do you want in your relationship? What were you taught to be to value in your relationship? I realized after all this time doing all this dating, for me, it was family. I moved back here to Virginia where my family is, right? A whole bunch of people look like me. You got my eyes and my nose yelling at me for a thousand different reasons. That's comforting me. But, you know, I, I realized in New York, I had a lot of friends who were just one kid and they had no cousins, no nephews, no nieces. Mm -hmm. And they and their bonding with people was kind of either immediate and needy or I don't need anybody. I'm super, you know, so I don't know. It's well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm people a, need people. People need people. So mildly, I can't really hate on dating apps. I mildly disagree with you because I think yeah. it's more with the millennials that are not yeah, they grew up with screens. They they they're not they're not they're not talking about marriage. They're talking no. about swiping left, swiping right, right, gig economy, living in these micro apartments, um, share share share. They're not buying. Yeah, I, I think they've been sold a, a bill of goods. <laughs> I think they have. I think. And here's the thing about young people: you can lie to them all day long, and then they get older and they become adults, and they still keep those lies that you taught them. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. I mean, you've told, you, you've told a generation of people that love doesn't matter, 
right? You've got a whole bunch of lawyers who made a good ton of money encouraging divorce in, in, in relationships that could have stayed together. Um, and now, what's the divorce rate in America? You know, during the pandemic, now all of a sudden people want to hook up. I call it apocalypse coupling. Nobody wants to be alone during this time. God forbid you get sick, right? There's a lot of these single moms like we just talked about. A woman just died who was 28 a couple of days ago, left three kids, right? It's just kind of like, you know, I always said men and women are not equal. We are complementary. You fill me in what I am lacking. I fill you in what you are lacking. We both look out for the kids. We both look out for our family. We both look out for our friends. But in the modern era, you know, we're equal. So we do everything equally. And nobody is better than anybody doing anything. So you can move, you can totally remove one person out of the equation and not miss anything, which is ridiculous. But I don't know, man. It's the, love is important in the world. I'm totally for it. But the way people go about it doesn't make any sense to me. It really doesn't and, make and, sense. and reason number four to identify if you've been catfished during a coronavirus pandemic is they have poor grammar. <laughs> what? Man. If they claim to be from the United States. How are you getting catfished by somebody who, who's not good at the English? If they claim to be from the United States, yet don't know how to write sentences or spell words, that's definitely a red flag. So if you're on, are you being taken by an African prince? If you're into online dating during the coronavirus, take precautions and practice social distancing. Make sure you go on video chat dates and make sure you're talking to the person that they say they are. How does that work? How do you social distance on a date? Don't meet anyone in person at this time. How do you Uh, you feel? You need to use an online dating app and make sure you're not being catfished. I, I wouldn't right. even. I wouldn't even know. I, I, I've never done it. I, I have no I know. Of it. I don't know that the whole, know, the whole thing sounds. Well, like in, over the last two weeks, I I saw two articles, um, and they were everywhere. And the the subject of the article was like, you know, if you smoke weed, you can get coronavirus, you can die. You know, don't smoke weed. And then another one like, you know, if if you uh. There were three. One was if you're heavy. One mm-hmm. was if you smoke weed, and the last one was if you're um, if you drink. So if you drink, if you want excess drinking, you can get coronavirus. You know, so all these things kind of like what your mom and your preacher is trying to like tell you so to get you like to sort of scare you straight. So now you're like, really? Now I I don't really know. If, Anything you said can be trusted. Like heaviness, weed, and alcohol, all the stuff that you always say. I'm surprised you didn't say if you're gay, you can get coronavirus. <laughs> so let's see what happens. I don't know. Oh my goodness. So April 23rd, 2020 is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Oh, nice. Um, but for some reason or another, I don't know, and maybe you know. It really doesn't feel that special being this year, being the 50th year, being in the middle of a coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> Actually, maybe I was thinking about that. Maybe, maybe it is a good thing or maybe it is special because, like I said, wildlife is walking back through some of these streets all over the mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. right? Nobody's, well, I guess people out on the ocean are, are still on the ocean around those cruise ships, essentially isolated with like 60 people. So, you know, maybe they're so gathering fish, but there's no one to buy it. So why would you go out? So that means the fish population has to be booming, I guess. Uh, the only people suffering are the squirrels and the birds that get the pigeons. And uh, I guess they have to learn to be wild again and not eat off humans. So it looks good, right? It's the uh, forest primeval philosophy coming back on you. Mm-hmm. Where... What did what did Brad Pitt say in um, Fight Club about walking through a primeval forest of New York with the? Uh, I, I, it's a beautiful quote. It's 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 like the uh, the quote from Blade Runner where he's seen rain. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm tired. I can't remember any of these quotes. But it's one of the great film quotes about uh, 
about, I guess, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a provocative image. Anyway, um, yeah, so let's, let's see what happens. I've got Fight Club in my head. <laughs> um, I guess the question of the evening is, does Congress have the testicular fortitude to push through this next stimulus package? I mean, checks are flowing as of yesterday. Um, at the time that we're recording, small it, business it's, offices it's running out of money. Two days, two days ago, the PPP application, you know, loans, the, the payouts, they, they're out of money. But checks started flowing. The big question is phase two of this stimulus package. Do you think Congress gets it done? You know, I kind of think they have to. I kind of think they have to. Uh, and it's got to be directed. Different. It can't be for companies and corporations. Uh, but I do think they have to. They have to flush the American people with cash or the American people will be on them, quite frankly. Well, um, I, I, I think it's it's kind of like a butterfly scenario where... Um, it's you, not. Don't tell me trickle down, please. Don't tell no, me trickle no, down. Okay. No, but but the twelve hundred doesn't do anything for them. No, no. That there has to be something else, and believe it or not, that does get the economy going because these people are going to start spending. I mean, unfortunately, some of them are going to spend it on silly things. Yeah, but you can't spend it on look. If your rent is due, you have to spend it on food, right? Right. Um, people are defaulting on rent and mortgages and car loans just to kind of what what is the what is the three primal needs for humans? Right, food, yeah. shelter, and uh, what is it? food, shelter, and uh, water. Water, right, exactly. So you need to, oh, good Lord, I, I missed it. Yeah, so, so you need to get the basics in, right? And you need, you need so those things in places that those things cost you easily more than 1200 bucks a month. I mean, food is likely going to cost you two, 300 bucks a month if you have a family. Mm -hmm. Shelter is going to cost you, in New York, it costs you three grand, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we all know that liquids and waters are expensive. Everybody buys bread of waters and all this nonsense. So some places don't even have water. Detroit doesn't even have water, you know? And the story came out today that the mayor cooked the books for five years on how bad the water was. Did you see that story? Mm -mm. They're still talking about Flint water and no one would mm. jail. It's outrageous. People are, are uh, when you were talking about the three Richard three Burton and the Senator Richard Burton sold his thoughts. Inside mm -hmm. a trade, and he's not gonna have a problem. Uh, that's outrageous. So, yeah, all this stuff will get people marching on Washington. When you were talking about three essential items, I thought you were gonna say toilet tissue. I didn't even know. I told you I'm, I'm gonna call this a toilet tissue rights <laughs> because if you can't, um, if you can't put <laughs> the basic commons like toilet paper and paper towels and diapers, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. And if you were smart, you'd be blaming the Chinese to take the heat off yourself because China, I mean, the world should be angry, but no one's, no one's is as angry as you are about this whole thing than like the American president, the American president. People are more angry at the American president than anywhere yeah. else. Than it's, anywhere it's crazy. a virus was generated or created or became out of control. It's all on the president because he's the leader of the free world. Everyone yep. looks to him for guidance and when he's shucking and jiving doing <laughs> campaign rallies right? when he should be giving an update and allowing the medical professionals to speak. That's the reason why yeah. he gets. Um, got a question about the Surgeon General. He made a comment last Actually. week. Oh, oh, you mean the, the right. <laughs> yeah, he says, I, so I, I'm saying to you, should Black America be offended 
by the U.S. Surgeon General's com- comments about Big Mama and Pop Pop. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think, look, if, if yeah, you're going to be a professional, yeah, be a professional. They, they, don't be a folks. They should be offended or? Yeah, yeah they, they should be. They should be. You know, if you're going to be a professional, be a professional. Don't be off folksy with me. With the, you know, it's like nothing pissed off dudes more in Brooklyn when I was a cop, when I was working with white guys who would roll up and go, yo, bro, yo, homie, let me talk to you. Yo, brother, let me talk to you. You're like, why are you, what are you, why are you addressing? You don't, what are you talking? It would offend me. And they're like, yo, you don't, and then, then all of a sudden, you don't know me. What, and then, then the cop will get mad because now you have an act. You know, but you should have called them bro, homie, you're my man, you know. Excuse me, sir, let me start to say, it's all you need. You're always supposed to be professional about it. And there's always people with this kind of like half-ass kind of Joe Cool vibe, that, that lazy Biden bullshit that you see Biden running around doing. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, big mama. You know, just go... You know what I mean? Who else does that? Just be professional about it. I don't look. Anthony Fauci ain't up there going, "Hey, no, Faison, come on, now. stay away from each other." He's Italian. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to lean in to to your stereotypes. You know what I'm saying? He is the Surgeon General. He doesn't. He doesn't need to be. And he also said something about lose weight. Yeah, he was off his. He was. He was off his meds that day. Wow. <laughs> oh my God! I saw that. I was just kind of like, "What is wrong with these people? Where does the Democrat, uh, the Democrat, where does the Republican Party find these people? They always find black people like this. That I'm always just kind of like, looks normal, and but they're slightly just kind of like, eh, just slightly off. He said he runs around with an inhaler. I'm like, you're the Surgeon General. Look, I'm like, uh, I don't even know. All right. I think so, he wants to be healthy and fit in that job. I think he was. I yeah. think he is. How does happen to him? He's just running around with an inhaler and he has asthma. An American military. That's outrageous to me. You know, you can't be in the military if you're allergic to bees. So I'm pretty sure if you have asthma, I know you can't fly planes. You have to, I'm not military. Somebody get in, get in his uh, comments and tell me about what you what the military will take. But, I mean, asthma? I guess that is something. I'm doing, I don't think they would, because you'd have an asthma attack in the bed. Then they got to look after you while fighting it. No, it's like the bee sting thing. You can't have somebody go down with an anaphylactic shock while you're deploy- deployed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a kicker. I don't, that, yeah. It's, it, that, when he did that, it reminded me of Hillary Clinton pulling hot sauce out of her bag. And I was just kind of like, what's going on here? What's really going on here? So yeah, maybe he's got asthma in my bag swag. But um Big Mama, Big Papa. My last question, and it's a common yeah. question. Oh yeah. It's it's actually three questions total. So um please tell me why Joe Biden needs to pivot. Because he's about to lose. He about to lose. He about to lose hard. You know. Joe he's Biden has a problematic career. He's going to have the entire world campaigning for him. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, that time, world don't vote American, right? Only Americans get to vote. So remember when the Barack was running, they were like, the Germans like, oh, come in. Say a speech at the, the, the I want to say it's the Reichstag, where the, uh, the, well, the old Reichstag used to be down this Berlin Wall, maybe. But anyway, he gave the speech, but before he was president. And and the the Republicans made a really good point that those people don't vote. Why is he over there like kissing up to Europe mm-hmm. and not winning an election? He happened to win, but he won. But you know, if he didn't, that could have been a really good reason of people saying, "Man, you lost because you were sitting up there talking to the Europeans, giving speeches, and you should have been here." Having said that, I think this is kind of sort of the excuse me. I think this is sort of the same thing. I made dinner yesterday and I got parts in my teeth. Um, <laughs> I think it's sort of the same thing. 
Um, the question that came up in our chat room um, in our pre-production was, do you, have you listened to his new podcast? He's got five episodes. Uh, I haven't listened to it. Um, I want to see him talk to people. I don't want to, I, I mean, don't want to see him. So how long are they episodes? doing 20 minute segments? I want to see him go out on the trail like everyone else. Does. So, so they're, the they're like 20 minute podcasts? No, I haven't seen them. I, I should probably look it up right now and tell you, right? All right. Um, I don't even, what's the name of that podcast? I think it's just just Google Joe 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 Biden podcast. Biden podcast. Um, yeah, but I I, I, think, I think it's a good idea. Um, you know, you're reaching out. You you're, you're here's, here's different, the problem. Different demographics. You should be on. Well, granted, you can't be on the trail now. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Granted, you can't be on the trail now, but you should be more visible than this. Barack Obama endorsed you and you were nowhere to be seen. Normally you're at least in the video with him, sitting next to him at the rally. I'm glad to have your support. He didn't even have a follow-up video. Thank you. You know, it was just, it's like they wake Joe Biden up every three days, put him in a suit. He gives a semi-coherent interview to friendly networks. And then he's gone again for like four weeks. And like, he's biding his time is what he's doing. And, and they're hiding them. They're hiding Biden is what they're doing. So somewhere along the lines, he's going to have to talk to Donald Trump. And Donald Trump is going to eat his lunch. So <laughs> Unless so, he shows up more. So his podcast is called Here's the Deal. And they're Here's ranging the around the first couple of were like 20 minutes. And then the last full, I mean, the last two have been roughly about 47 minutes. So, oh, really? Does he look coherent? Because I, I mean, some people think he's it's dementia, which is progressive, right? <laughs> progressive. <laughs> uh, the only thing progressive about Biden. Okay, so some people think it's dementia. Other people think it's just uh, natural aging issues where he's not slow on anything. But you know, sometimes you you he's quick as a whip. Is he really? He seems quick. From from what okay, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna this week the, for the next part. I'm gonna watch. I'm not. I can't tolerate much Biden. I'm gonna watch the last two fully. I'm not even gonna say I'm gonna commit to all of them, I'm, but I'm gonna watch the last well, two. I, I think every time I, I see him, he seems to be struggling to catch his words, and and uh to, but I get that you're not supposed to be. I mean. Well, you don't want to seem like you're rehearsed. You know, you don't want that. Right. Like, right. And that was that was always Biden's magic. He always seemed like uh a, I don't want to say folksy, but he always seemed like an every man who like was in the hood. He like you come on, man. He, like he talked to you guy. He had this sort of neighborhood vibe to him, but he's been working that for fifty years. You know, even as he worked against uh some of these issues. That that everybody wants. So now he's he claims to be a progressive. Somebody tell me how an eighty year old man is progressive, and 80, who's got a fifty year history of of no, you know, just being a Democrat and an in line, you know, down the road Democrat. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know. This whole thing looks bad. I don't know if his pod is good, but. I think if it was, I would have heard gotta, more you, about you it. You gotta listen to it. You gotta give. I it know, but but wouldn't I have heard more about it from other sources who were like, "Oh wow, Joe had so and so on his pod. He made a really good point about X, Y, and Z." Wouldn't have, wouldn't that have happened? Might have, might have. Uh, but I'm not hearing anything from him. Joe, it's Joe. Biden I'm hearing more about that him. that guy from the not community. I, I love news on Netflix now. Uh, what's the show? Tip Parks and Rec. So yeah. that guy yeah, who's, who's no, Joe he's McCann. not John Wick. He's John Ryan. Joe McCann. Uh, right. Oh, oh no, Krasinski. No, no, not John Krasinski from the office. Yes, John Krasinski. So he's got a pad, and I've been hearing a lot. Uh, I, he's got a podcast, and I've been hearing a lot about his podcast. It's, I was it's, like, it's really like a show. It's like right? a, it's a fifteen-minute show. 
Okay. Well, I've been hearing a lot about that and 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 not about Biden, and so that tells me that. Look, this is what they did with Clinton. Clinton stopped giving speeches, stopped giving appearances, and would just release press releases for like five months. And people were like, she has not taken a question, had a public meeting for five months. And it's I, by then I think it was around. It was around. June, and it, it kept ticking up, and then she had that issue around the September 11th thing. Mm-hmm. But by then, then she had to talk to people because she almost passed out on the sub. You know, she thought it was a heat. But yeah, she totally stopped talking to people. She stopped reaching out to people. She just knew it was a lot. And then she knew, you know, all the people who voted for Barack Obama were going to vote for her. And that is why she's president today. Um, that was smug, I know. I just started, well, season four of The Good Fight, which is like the sequel of The the Good Wife. This is one right. of the rare shows that I think, like the second, the, the spinoff of the show is better than its original. Really? Yeah, it's a really good show. In season four, they're reimagining. Isn't that, this about rich lady lawyers? Yes. And it's about, yeah, okay. um, they're reimagining if... Hillary Clinton won the election. So I guess this whole season is going, it's like a political satire. That's not political it's satire. A, That's it's just a wishful great. thinking. It's you know what? And, uh, here's, here's American propaganda again. Mm-hmm. When Hillary Clinton was running, do you know how many shows you had on television about women politicians? There was like seven of them. Mm-hmm. Right, one was mm-hmm. with uh, Duchovny's ex-wife. What was that? Mm-hmm. Like she was Secretary of State or something. Yeah. One was with Gina Davis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one was with uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus. I forget the others, but uh, they were all over the place. Deep. And and that was that was to that was to set your your head up as a as a citizen to see it on TV to get you used to a woman president that run out in November and vote for her. And no nah. one did it. It happened. Veep, hey, Veep was on. Veep Veep was up until on Barack Veep. Obama, there was a lot of shows about black presidents. Veep was on for like. <laughs> it, it, it loosened your mind to these ideas. I'm dead. I said Veep was on for six seasons. Come on. Yeah, I know, but it, yeah, it takes it. Does, it doesn't. It doesn't take a year. It takes loosening the whole like idea up. And Veep was funny as can be. I don't know if you watched it or not. I watched the first few seasons, and then I was just kind of like, I don't it, get it. It got even funnier towards the end. I'm telling you. She just you, seemed she, incompetent. She seemed she, incompetent when I had problems with government, and I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> and she, she was mean to her staff. I was just kind of like, Louise, she, it was very Amy Klobuchar. If Amy Klobuchar had a, a, <laughs> a show, I, I think that it would be that. It would be like, it would be like me. She seemed... She seemed calculating. She wanted to get to the next level. She wanted to be vice president, right? Of something like that. Then she got to be vice president. And then she couldn't run her office. And then she mm-hmm. had like that weird, like, yeah, yeah, I remember. It was like, funny. Yeah. yeah. One of, uh, a, a ton of Emmys. Yeah, look who gave it Emmys. Yeah. Right um, before the Me Too era happened. Who's giving people awards? Look, after all this happened, you should look at... Uh, at the environment that it was given in. You know what I mean? Just just okay. to make sure that your head is clear. Okay. So. I mean I I just when when you start talking about show, I, I, I for one, like I said, I religiously have watched the good fight in mm. phenomenal show, ensemble cast, the funny as can be, John Krasinski, his his some good news is his show. He's a YouTube show. Um, right. It's about it's like 15, twelve to fifteen minute episodes, and he, I'm gonna if he writes this himself or does he have a team? They, everyone on YouTube now has a team of writers. I think he might have written it because he's been into some writing and directing. Oh, okay. So, um, and it is it is only fifteen minutes, so and it's fifteen minutes, and it's all him. He's sitting behind his desk. He's got the camera going. And he's having people connect to him with Zoom. And he's interviewing people. It's it's really, really good. So these are his friends? 
Yeah, I guess you could say these. Or, or is it like Rogan where he interviews phys- no. I'm about to say phys- physics and phys- physicians? No. Physics. Physics. What is the person who does physics? The person who does is a. Physics. Thank you. Ooh, I'm just having brain farts for days here. So where he interviews uh, astrologists and physicists and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so sociologists it's, and all these lighter. interesting people. It's a light oh, it's show. Way much okay. May, way much lighter, and it's like I said, it's some good news. He's talking about feel good stories and all this other stuff. He right. some some little uh, it was a uh, a little girl was on his show, and she either her parents purchase tickets for um man what's the show hamilton she, and oh, okay. of course I love that show. because because of covid because of coronavirus she couldn't go so she had the entire he had the entire cast connect on zoom and they sang her a song yeah you know that's stuff nice like that. stuff like that yeah that's nice i yeah. saw uh Che, um, Michael Che paid the rent for everybody in his grandma's building, which is nice. NYCHA. That's a mm-hmm. NYCHA building. Oh, uh, is it? Mm-hmm. It's a NYCHA building. Why is your grandma to live in public housing if you're a millionaire in New York? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. See, this is, this, this, see, I got all kind of problem with this. You know, I don't know. This, this is the new America. Um, my last Biden question for you. Yeah, yeah. How should Vice President Joseph Biden Jr. I, the, 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 the key part of this is how. How should Biden pick his running mate? Huh. All right. Well, I'm not voting for Biden. But if Biden wants my vote, <laughs> He could absolutely have my vote if he picks Nina Turner, who would just burn the place down. He's not going to do that. So if he picks Kamala Harris, which he likely will, I'm not voting for him. Because just because you pick a brown face does not mean you have the right philosophy. She's done a lot of damage to the black community. So she might as well be, you know, the daughter of the Klan, as far as I'm concerned. Uh So who else you got? Amy Klobuchar, who's got a 25-year-old sitting in jail right now. And no one looked at you. You only cared to get her out of the race, but now that she's out of the race, he's still there. So now all these journalists, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm 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 out on her. Who else you got? Uh, Warren. She's too old. She's seventy four, right? Am I wrong? She's how old is how old are these guys? Trump is someone's got, someone should should fact check me. I think Trump is seventy eight. He might be young. He might be 77. Biden is 78. Maybe Trump is 76. Biden is 78. Elizabeth Warren is like 74. I, I, I don't really know what you want me to do with these people. Or the second tier people, uh, who's uh, the girl who was like, oh, you have to be your vice president. What's her name? <laughs> Stacey Abrams? Mm-hmm. She didn't win anything. She wants to be vice. She has, did anybody elect her to anything ever? No. No. It's this. I mean, the DNC has cultivated these useless brown faces, like people cultivate chickens in a yard. So now they just go, "Oh, we need a brown face. We need a Latino. We need a," and they just I, dig I, one I, out. I, and so they're I, always I, the same person, just from a different I got, I got, culture I got, and a different background. I got and they are in, Hold on, they are inconsequential, and they do not move the bar. The only person in the Democratic Party who got herself there is uh, Alexander Acacio uh, Cortez. She she got the now she's trying to stay there. She's beginning to play these I'm gonna stay in Congress longer games. But she was not a pick by the Democratic Party to be there to represent a group. She fought her ass in there and she earned her spot. But all these other people, oh, you look exactly like what would look good on the California ticket, Kamala. No, but don't worry about us. You're, you know what? And then you look back and, and you see all the damage they've done to people's families. You can't keep voting for that. You know, you want I, a better I America. Say, I will say this. So, yeah, I don't know. In that last answer to Ooh. that question, I said, how should Biden pick his running mate? I think yes. Again, 
You offended, I can throw every, them. You offended every group. I didn't possible. offend anybody. There's a couple of people you I ain't offend. offended everyone possible. I would like to apologize for all the people that oh. I have offended. No, no, I'm gonna give a Republican apology. Uh, if you were, if you all were offended, if what I say have offended you, and you feel that you deserve an apology, then I understand. Which is not even an acknowledgement. It is W apology. Man, all that Roy Combs stuff that he taught the Republicans. Oh my God! Oh my God! I will from here. <laughs> I'm gonna say thank you. Seriously, if if I offend you, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend anybody. No, 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 no. I'm, you didn't offend. I'm all for love and all for. So please keep watching the, the pod and keep watching late night oh, podcasts and uh, come through my channel, True Armor on YouTube, and uh, follow me on Twitter and don't follow me on Facebook. I'm off of Facebook permanently. Uh, follow me on Twitter. You're yeah, off on Facebook. Facebook? What happened? Yeah, my, all my family's on Facebook. I had an incident. I'm just kind of done with all all the Facebook. I'm tired of arguing with white liberals about what racism and unfairness is. So as they you, you New had York. an incident with a family member or with just no, I had incident. Person. No, it's a it, it it was the last incident in a whole series of incidents, and I was like, this year is just this year is just shit. <laughs> Excuse my language. This year is kicking my ass. It's time to cut losses. And what's the song say? Cut times with all the lives that you've been living with, that you've been living in. So yeah. And if you want to see me again, I will understand. But if you don't, I will understand that too. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's. Oh my God. It's a pandemic, people. If you can make ties and and, and make amends with with family members and. And loved ones that you haven't spoken to for a while, now's the time to do it, seriously. But it's also the pandemic. Maybe you should cut the bullshit with people who are just wasting your time and your energy and your life and move to something better. You know, like I said earlier, pick up guitar, write that great American novel. Whether it's, it, it sells or not, just write it. Get it out of your, you know what I'm saying? And, and get with somebody who, who feels you. Whether you're lazy and cool or if you're, super stoic and all about it. Just find somebody who feels you, no matter what your nature is, because there's somebody out there. So, please, it's the pandemic. It's the uh, apocalypse. It's the apocalypse dance party. Get your coupling on. Find the right app, and uh, don't cry about your choice when you when you pick it, her or him. And this is Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents. Uh, we will see you again next week. You Peace. did? Yeah. Hey.